What's going on guys? It's Henry back with a video and we have to talk about Airbnb stock because I believe this stock is undervalued and we have an opportunity in front of us. Over the past month, this stock is up 15%. Airbnb operates an online marketplace for lodging, primarily homestays for vacation, rentals, and tourism activities. I currently live in an Airbnb in Kiev, Ukraine, so I've done a deep dive analysis into the stock because it got me very interested after I saw the large fees I was paying. Airbnb's business is very interesting because they don't own any real estate but are valued at over $100 billion. Airbnb stock is trading at a forward price to sales ratio of 17.7. That's similar to Tesla. However, its current valuation is below the forward price to sales ratio high of 23 it was trading at back in February. Additionally, this is a full software business that has quarterly revenue growth of 298%. Airbnb is disrupting the travel and tourism industry. Its platform connects 4 million hosts with potential guests around the globe, offering far more flexibility and privacy than traditional hotel chains. Additionally, Airbnb has expanded beyond lodging, helping people find authentic experiences in 1,000 cities around the world. In the wake of the pandemic, the travel industry is changing and Airbnb is ready for it. Remote work has made people more flexible about when and where they go and more travelers are opting for unique experiences rather than typical tourist attractions. In fact, searches for unique lodging on Airbnb are up 94% this year compared to 2019. Notably, that trend hits one of the company's key advantages. Guests can find over 170,000 unique listings on the platform from a treehouse in the rainforest of Hawaii to a tiny house in the Italian Alps. Guests can even stay at a castle in the English countryside. No traditional hotel chain can offer such varied experiences. But that's not the only change. Guests are also visiting more remote destinations. So far this year, 22% of nights booked on Airbnb have been for rural stays, but the figure was less than 10% back in 2015. This highlights another benefit of Airbnb's business model. Its platform has listings in places where traditional hotels wouldn't make financial sense. That's because Airbnb's inventory is more dynamic. It's much easier to onboard a new host than it is to build a brand new hotel. Here's the big picture. After spending over a year living under pandemic-driven restrictions, many people are ready to travel again. In fact, CEO Brian Chesky recently said, we expect travel rebound unlike anything we have seen before. I've been playing Airbnb options for some time and want to show you guys some technical analysis along with a leap option I believe can make a lot of money. Let's jump into my screen. All right, guys, what's going on? So let's take a look into my screen and let's do some analysis on Airbnb stock. As you guys can see, my portfolio is right here. And basically on the right-hand side, I have sold puts on Airbnb. There's actually a number of things that you can do with Airbnb if you want to make some profits on the stock, because essentially I am and bullish on this stock. I think we have a lot of upsides. In terms of some option positions, the first thing that I want to cover for you guys is leap options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into A, B, and B, but I'm also going to pull up the Yahoo Finance charts. I want to show you guys three different indicators that I use to basically tell me where Airbnb stock is going to the future. So here we are. Airbnb stock is trending upwards. Its momentum is really good. I really like to see this stock above $160 per share because not too long ago, this stock was struggling to stay above 160. I mean, it's had a tremendous run up. This stock was beaten down all the way down to $131, which was really, really cheap. I was selling puts in the private group back then. And I'm still selling puts on Airbnb because I'm trying to add Delta and exposure to Airbnb stock as a whole. Taking a look here, guys, basically, if I was going to buy a leap option, which is essentially just a similar to a call option, a leap option is a long term call option, which allows you to own 100 shares without having to spend all of the money in collateral of actually buying 100 shares of stock. So essentially, if you take a look at the Bollinger Band right now, it's about $179. Now, if I'm going to buy a leap option, it has to be about one year out. If I'm going to go one year out. I really do believe that Airbnb has potential to be $225 per share or even higher. If you take a look at the Bollinger Band right here, it was way higher than $225. I'd be pretty comfortable buying $225 leap options because if Airbnb does go up 50%, that would only be $50 billion. That may seem like a lot, but for Airbnb, I think this is totally possible because as the world starts to open back, up, Airbnb will see a lot more travelers going out. And that's going to be tremendously valuable for their software based business where they're collecting large fees. And all of that basically hits the bottom line because as a software business, it has very high profit margins. So in terms of Airbnb stock, it's currently $173.94. Again, I said that I believe this could be a $225 stock and higher. So I'm going to go to trade Airbnb options. And from here, I'm actually going to go to different dates and I'm going to go significantly out. And I'm actually not going to go to January 21st, 2022 
two because that's technically not a leap since it's only three months from today. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look at January 2023. So that's going to be one year in three months. That would make this option a leap and not just a call option. So let's go to January 2023. And I'm already on the correct settings right here by call. So if I scroll up, I'm going to scroll up to the $225 call option. Of course, we don't actually have the $225 call option. So I'm going to look at the 220 right here. And it has a very reasonable premium. If I expand this option right here, the 220 strike actually has a delta of 0.4, which is very high for an option that's pretty far dated. However, this just shows you that when you buy a leap option, you have a very good chance of making a profit because there's so much time value to the option that the delta is still going to be high. Now, taking a look at a leap option, guys, I want to expand a little bit on the Greek. So if you take a look at the delta, it's 0.4. And something else that's very important to look at is theta. Theta is basically how much an option decays per day. Now, a high theta would be pretty bad if you're an option buyer, because that means that your option is decaying very quickly per day. However, for this option on Airbnb, the theta is 0.03. That's a very small theta. That means it's on average losing $3 per day, which is not a whole lot of money. So you can hold this Airbnb leap for a long time and see what happens with Airbnb. If it ends up going higher, let's say that it goes to 180 and 190 and $200 per share in the short term, this leap will see a significant rise and you can just sell the leap. However, for me, I'm interested in Airbnb as a long-term hold because I'm very bullish on the business. So if I plan to hold this leap option out until January 20th of 2023, then basically my goal would be for Airbnb to go higher than $239 per share. And essentially that has to happen because the strike price is 220 and the premium is $19. So for me to break even, it has to be $239 per share. And if, for example, this stock just went up to about $250 per share, that would be about a 50% return because 250 minus 220 would be $30 and you're spending $19. So basically you're spending 20 bucks and you're getting 30 bucks back. So that's a 50% return in a little bit over a year, which for me is a tremendously high return rate. Now, if Airbnb stock actually ended up going to $270 and not $250, you would actually see a 250% return because 270 minus 220 is 50 and you're only spending about 20. So you're two and a half Xing your money and the numbers just continue to get crazier because a leap option has tremendous leverage. So as soon as Airbnb stock goes above its break even price, you're going to be having tremendous profits as long as Airbnb continues to rise before expiration. So that's one of the strategies that I'm really looking at for Airbnb. Buying a leap option will be tremendously cheaper than just buying 100 shares of stock, which would be $17,400. And instead of spending $17,400, you can instead just spend $1,900, which is basically a 90% discount for still owning 100 shares of Airbnb. Now, you guys have seen that I have been selling puts on Airbnb. And that's basically because I have a bit of a larger portfolio. And for me, I want to add exposure to Airbnb. And I want to use some of the capital that I have to potentially buy Airbnb at a cheaper price. So I want to quickly go over selling puts on Airbnb. And then I also want to cover put credit spreads because these are the top strategies that I have for making money on Airbnb as long as the stock stays pretty neutral or rises. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to click sell and I'm going to click sell puts. And now I don't necessarily want to go out to January 20, 2023 because that is a long time to sell a put. So instead, I'm going to go to January 21st, 2022, because that's basically a quarter away. That's 90 days away. So if I can collect a very good premium for 90 days out, and it's going to be very advantageous for me to have this position. And also the way I think about it is if this position is very successful, then I'll just wait for it to expire until next year. And if it's not very successful, I'm actually going to close the position this year and take a loss because it's actually going to be beneficial for my taxes. At the end of the year, there's something called tax loss harvesting. And when you have a losing position, it's actually not a bad idea to sell a losing position if you have made a lot of profits in the rest of your portfolio. So now let's take a look at selling a put option. I'm actually going to go back to Yahoo Finance and I want to look at the middle of the Bollinger Band. So about the middle of the Bollinger Band is $149. I'd be very happy to sell a put and actually own Airbnb at $149, but unfortunately it's $173. Now, if I was a regular stockholder, I would just have to wait, right? And cross my fingers and say, hey, in the future, I'm ready to buy Airbnb at $149. And if it does doesn't go down there, I'm going to keep waiting like a regular stock investor. However, as an option trader and as an option investor, what you can do instead is get paid for waiting. So instead of waiting and not getting paid and doing it for free, you might as well get paid for selling some puts. So let's take a look at the option chain. And basically, I'm going to go down to $150 strike because that's the point where I'd be really happy to own Airbnb. Now, the good news is actually, even if I picked 150 strike, there's a lot of premium here. There's $623 to be made. So my actual break even or my actual 
average cost, if I actually get put Airbnb stock, will be $143.77. Now that's a really good thing because a lot of people will sell puts and yeah, they get executed at the price that they like, but also what they don't realize is when you sell a put option, you're actually creating yourself a margin of safety. You're creating a full cushion for yourself and you're collecting really good money. So you're actually creating income and margin of safety at the very same time because this is how Warren Buffett became so wealthy. So if you guys do some quick math, 10% of 150 is $15. So about half of that would be seven and a half. So this is about a 4% return in just three months. This is not a huge return. However, this is a very attractive return because if you think about long-term stock investing, the average market return rate is between eight to 12%. So you're gonna be making 4%, which is about 12 or actually it's probably around 13% per year. So you're making as much money as a stock investor would. However, you're also creating yourself an opportunity to buy a very attractive stock at a lower price. So you're getting paid a very good average rate of return and you're creating an opportunity for yourself to buy a stock at the price that you wish. And for me, this would be around $150, but in fact, it's going to be $143.77 in this case scenario. Now, the last thing I wanna show you guys is a put credit spread is going to be somewhat similar to selling a put. However, selling a put credit spread is even more advantageous, especially for small account portfolios because you don't have to put up that much money to begin trading. Now, what I'm going to do and what I'm gonna show you guys is a pretty big return, but I also want you guys to understand that there is more risk to doing a put credit spread because if the stock goes against you, you can lose the entire collateral that you're putting up for the trade, which is exactly why I teach all my students to use Bollinger Bands, moving averages and RSI correctly and to be very safe when they're selling put credit spreads because just one out of 10 losers will really skew your results. So you wanna be careful and have as many winners as possible, which is why I've been 96% successful in the private option community. And I do recommend that you guys check it out if you're interested. So let's look at the option chain. I'm gonna go down to about 135, maybe 130. What I'm doing here right now as I'm making this video is I'm looking at the premiums because I'm trying to take a look at the difference between the two premiums. For example, I might look at 125 and 120 and I see that the premium here is 190 and 148. So that's about $42 in terms of premium. And I know that the spread is going to be about $500. 42 divided by 500, I already know in my head that it's going to be about an eight and a half percent return, which is a fantastic return for just three months because eight times four would be about 33% returns, which would be a really big return I'd be happy with. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to sell the 125. That's gonna be a sell put. And as you guys can see here, it would cost a lot of money. It's gonna cost $12,310. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to buy a put. And now what happens is when I'm buying a put, right? You have one obligation, but now you have one opportunity in terms of you have complete control when you buy the 120, the strike below 125, even if the stock goes down to zero, right? Your 120 will make money. So it actually gets cut off rather than having to have $12,300 worth of capital when you buy the 120, you guys will notice right now that my capital requirement will be $500 minus the premium that I collect, which is gonna be $42. So 500 minus 42 is going to be $558. And I meant $458. So right here, you guys can see that we're gonna be collecting $42 per this contract and the maximum loss is $458. So it's going to be about a 10% return in a very quick matter of time. It's actually a little bit higher than what I was thinking before. Before. So this would translate into over 40% annualized returns if you were going to do this position four times per year. Now, what you need to happen for Airbnb stock is you need it to stay above $125. But as we look at the chart right here, you can notice here that $119 is the very bottom of the Bollinger Band, which is very low to begin with. But also I haven't really seen Airbnb stock go below $130 for a very long time. In the past two years, I mean, it's only been around $130 a couple times. So for it to go below $130, $125, I'd be very, very comfortable to bet that that's not gonna happen. In fact, let me just put my money where my mouth is and let me actually execute this trade right now in front of you guys. So I'm gonna open up a one contract. I'm gonna put the premium to be 35. That's because I wanna get executed and not waste any time on YouTube because I know everyone's time is very, very valuable and I respect your time. There you go, I just got filled. I made $35 on just 500, which is a 7% return. Again, not too shabby. That's gonna be about 28% annualized return. So I collected $35. Now, if I look at the option chain, I'm very confident here that 125 is not likely to happen because when I expand it, the delta 
is actually 0.08, which means there's an 8% chance of this option actually expiring in the money. So I have a 92% chance of success. However, the reason why I'm a little bit more successful in the private group than it actually shows in terms of Delta is because not only am I looking at Delta, I'm also using different indicators. I'm using three specific indicators that I've learned during my time at Goldman Sachs. And that's what I like to teach my students. And that's why I've been 96% successful. This is really important because even a small loss will tremendously impact the amount of money that you can make, especially when you're using spreads. If you guys enjoyed learning options, but more importantly, want great results, I've dedicated my life to educating option traders how to perfect their trading with strategies that are non-losing along with hiring two six-figure coaches and a licensed CPA in the Option Income Academy. If you're interested, you can watch the training and submit an application below. Thank you so much for watching. No one ever